Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the show where we like our sports fake, our wrestling reel, a show, you know, where we snapped into the Slim Jim and we just haven't quite snapped out yet. So snap into it with us for the next, I don't know, 30 or so minutes. We'll bring you today in wrestling history, as we always start out with today wrestling history, one of the most tragic nights in wrestling history. We lost Owen Hart at the Over the Edge 1999 pay-per-view. Uh, you know, remember doing the Blue Blazer skit, he fell, tragically passed away, and uh, I'll never forget where I was that night, because it was, you know, May 23rd, it was the long weekend, we just got done, I didn't watch the pay-per-view live, um, came inside from lighting off fireworks on a fire, uh, whatever, May 2-4 weekend, and uh, just turned on the news and, like, couldn't believe it that, you know, he's my favorite wrestler in the, uh, WWE, WWF at the time, uh, next to The Rock. I really liked The Rock during that time. Uh, what Brett was, Brett was his brother. Bret Hart was my favorite, and he was gone to WCW. So Owen was, you know, the last of the Hearts, and that night he was taken away from us way too early. Who knows what Owen could have went on to? Uh, maybe be champion eventually. Uh, just the worst night in wrestling history from what I remember. I mean, I was little and I remember crying that Owen Hart was no longer with us. So we're going to reflect on Owen Hart remember the better times that we had with Owen Hart as fans of wrestling. What Owen was always there to entertain us more than anyway. He didn't take wrestling as serious as a lot of the guys do, especially when his brother Brett took wrestling. That, you know, he was the best in the world. And Owen was just as good, if not better, than Brett in the ring, and he had a lot more charisma than Brett. He always entertained us, no matter what, in the ring. He never half-assed it or phoned in a match that I ever remembered seeing, and he could just do all the acrobatic stuff that the, the, the lighter guys could do, plus all that technical mat wrestling. Owen could adapt to anything, too. Whatever they threw out Owen Hart, if it was to hurt his career, or they just didn't know what to do with him, teaming with Coco, Coco Beware or Yokozuna, he seemed to make that work. He always could. They put him in the nation of domination. He made that work. They called him a nugget, a nugget of shit. And Owen made that work. And I was just watching last night the Breakdown 99 paper, Breakdown 98 pay-per-view where he fought Edge. And it's in Canada, and both guys are Canadian, but the... Nugget chants were a, tier, a term of endearment towards Owen, and to make being called a piece of poop make you over, Owen was the guy who could do it. So, we all know the story of Owen Hart, uh, the youngest of 12 of the Hart family, Stu Hart and Helen Hart. Stu Hart, famous wrestler in Calgary, all the boys became wrestlers, and uh, all the sisters married wrestlers. They were the biggest family in wrestling when I was a kid. That was, the hearts were everywhere. You couldn't watch wrestling without knowing who the hearts were, especially in Canada. So he starts out in the Stampede Wrestling in Calgary, wins Rookie of the Year 1987, uh, goes to Japan and wins, uh, you know, has legendary fights with uh, Jushin Liger before he was even Jushin Liger uh, when he was Kichi Yamada. And uh, wins the, uh, he's the first ever non-American, or non-Japanese, sorry, to win the uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, which he only holds for about a month, but still a major accomplishment being the first non-Japanese wrestler to pick up that title. Then he goes and makes his WWF debut under the mask, Blue Blazer, because he didn't want, they didn't want him to, you know, rely on Brett at that time that that's why he's there because he's Brett's little brother and everything so he dons a mask and he's a blue blazer and you could tell back then watching if you didn't know that was Owen Hart if you followed Owen Hart you would know that was Owen Hart by the way blue blazer the things he did in the ring a lot of people weren't doing them the flips and you know superhero maneuvers that he would do and but nothing really memorable in that run other than he you know, did a job to uh, Ted DiBiase on a Saturday Night's Main Event. And then at, uh, the highlight, I guess, of that run would be him and Mr. Perfect at the opening match on WrestleMania 5, which was a great match 
for what what it was, it was you know Mr. Perfect kind of squashed. They, but he got moves in, and that, that, that he was frustrated. I I think anybody would have been with seeing how Owen was used at that time, and he didn't want to just become a jobber and job out, and then that be the pinnacle of his career. So he leaves and goes to the Indies again in the Stampede for a little bit before surfacing really quickly in the WCW, where again, he's kind of just lost among, you know, who was there. He had maybe the biggest thing, he had a tag team match with Ricky Morton, and he beat, I think, Mark Kyle in a match. I'm not, I'm not even sure what show it was. It was just, you know, real him squash matches. Beating jobbers. So he comes back. He, Brett gets him another shot in the, uh, well, he earned his own shot, but he gets in the WWF again where he's to first team with Jimmy Anvil, his brother-in-law, and Brett's former tag partner in the new foundation, which on paper, you know, it seems like, yeah, this is going to be it. This is going to be really good for Owen, but they give him, you know, the, 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 the uh, attire that they wore was kind of silly. It was like neon green with the, like, checkerboard stuff, but... You know, uh, they make it work, and it seems like it's going good for them, and then Anvil unexpectedly, you know, gets released, and that's kind of the end of it, so they throw him with Coco Beware in the high energy thing, and again, it's like, oh, and making the best of a bad situation, kind of, why would they team him with Coco? Now that Coco is a bad wrestler, anything like that, just, you're like, kind of, why? Why are they do, doing this to Owen? But he makes it work for a little while. And they go on to have some matches, which leads up to 1993, where the, the Survivor Series, it's Bret Hart and his brothers versus the King's henchmen there, and they, uh, you know, they, the Hart's kind of squash him, uh, you know, nobody gets eliminated except for Owen, and he blames Bret as Bret flies, like he bumps into Bret when he's on the apron, and Bret flies off and, you know, hits a sternum on the guardrail, and the brothers kind of pay attention to that, see what's, is Brett okay, is Brett okay, and Owen's left in the ring alone, he gets pinned, and he's the only one of the brothers who gets, you know, out of the match, so it starts this turmoil within the Hart family, um, and uh, Owen kind of just like, they're all, all about Brett, it's all about Brett, what about Owen, you know, where's Owen, why are Owen living in the shadows, so Brett kind of, Tries to fix things though, and starts having these matches with uh, Owen as his tag partner. And that uh, Royal Rumble 1994, they go up against the Quebecers, where you know Brett ends up they lose the match, and Owen kind of takes out his frustrations on Brett, blaming Brett for a while. They're always losing, and he kicks out Brett's leg, and setting up for what later comes at WrestleMania 10, which. Maybe my favorite Owen Hart match. Uh, it's the one I remembered watching, you know, when I was little, when it happened. It was my first real exposure to Owen. I'm about six at this point. And he's putting, been put in the main event scene finally. And I mean, I, I didn't, at this point, I didn't understand wrestling. I just, you know, watched what, what was given to me. And I loved Brett by this point. And obviously, at the, I wanted to like Owen because he's his brother, but he's the little brother from hell. And, uh, so I really hated Owen. I hated him. It just how he blamed Brett for everything, and he was screwing up the family, and in Canada, I don't know if it was just Canada, I think it was everywhere, but we were torn in this whole feud, because these were our guys from Canada, and they seemed like they were our family almost, when they would see them on TV every week, and so exposed to them, and to see the family in shambles because of the black heart, Owen Hart, screwing everything up. So it leads to WrestleMania 10, where Brett has to fight Owen, and Owen comes up with the victory and beats Brett. It wasn't for the title, but he got that respect that I beat my brother, I'm better than my brother, I, you know, I did, I proved to you all it was my brother. So Owen's got that push, and leads up to Brett getting, you know, the final word. They have the title on the line at SummerSlam 1994, the family's there in the audience, and Everything and it's this grueling cage match, one of the best of the big old blue bar cage match too that WWE did, you know the thick steel bars and they had, uh, you know again one of my favorite Owen Hart matches. And anything he did with Brett, obviously worth checking out if you haven't seen it. But that they had such a time where WWE didn't have a lot like no blood, the no blood policy. Those guys had a brutal cage match. It was 
just one of the best case matches at that time that for a long time I, that you really see. I think until the Attitude Era really picked up in WWE, you saw some better cage matches. But that time, like we could WrestleMania two, Hogan and and uh, Co uh, King Kong Bundy, you know, like that that was nothing. This match had everything. I mean, just back and forth, uh, great storytelling through obviously with Brett and Owen. And uh, still, the feud wouldn't end there, even though Brett got the one, the win. And at uh, Sur uh, Survivor Series '94, it was Bob Backlund versus Bret Hart in the match where Owen convinced Helen to throw in the towel and you know make cost Brett the title. He cost Bret Hart the championship that that one, and he was still you know the Black Heart and. Uh, Went separate from Brett there, the, the family kind of, you know, feud on and off, but the, the, it was, a, from there, Owen was put in a tag team, again, why, why would they, but they put him with Yokozuna, and honestly, the reason he picked Yoko, though, was because he beat Brett Hart, he, you know, he pinned him and won the title from Brett, so he was the best guy, he thought, he, the guy who beat the world champion, and you know what? Honestly, they were managed by Jim Cornette at that time. And I, at that, when I was a kid, I hated Jim Cornette. But because I loved Owen Hart, I and wanted to love Owen Hart, I liked that tag team. Looking back at it, I think they were one of the better tag teams from that era. Yoko and, you know, Owen was a really good tag team. It really worked for the mismatch. I like mismatch tag teams. Like, if you remember the Attitude Era, Kane and X-Pac, I thought that was a great tag team, too. And... Anyway, Owen and Yoko, they went on, they had the belts, and then around this time, too, he would team up with his brother-in-law, British Bulldog. So they never really had anything going on with Brett during that time. It was almost kind of surprising. But during, also, during the time when Bulldog, I just remember this because I watched this match last night, and if you've never seen this match, it's kind of a hidden gem, I guess. It's uh, for the European, it's the finals for the European title, and Owen and Bulldog tear the house down in that. That match, uh, like if you have, I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but if you haven't seen that match, watch that, watch that match. Uh, sure, it's on the network, I'm sure. Uh, I watched it on the Owen the disc, three disc DVD last night uh, in preparation for this. So all things come full circle though, and they decide that they're gonna put the Heart Foundation back together, plus members. And Brett kind of comes to the ring while Owen and Bulldog are having it out and says, you know, this is great promo, but one of Brett's better, better promos. He comes out and says, they got us fighting against each other. It's always been them against us. Uh, and, you know, the Federation has pinned our, and made our family hate each other. And all these fans made and fed into it and made us, you know, we got to get back together. And, you know, they recruit Pillman. Anvil, Bulldog, Owen, Brett, the New Heart Foundation, and this is when I really came into watching Raw's War every every single week from here till 2000. Uh, was I loved the Heart Foundation? It was all my guys that I loved because they were all hearts in Canada. We loved the heart. You see it where it all culminates at the Calgary Stampede, Stampede the 5 on 5 match uh, with the Heart Foundation versus the Road Warriors, Shamrock, Austin, and what's it, Vader? Vader? I think it was Vader. I watched it last night. There's so many people in that match, it's hard to remember. But, um, yeah, we, we just, we loved the hearts here, Canada. They were, you know, it was that time where they were bad guys everywhere else in the world. But in Canada, we loved them. They go to... They'd be, you know, in Texas one weekend, spit on and everything's thrown on them. And then you come to Canada and they're just, you couldn't even hear them talk. Just, uh, you know, the emotion was so loud in those arenas. And it was, at that time you'll never see. You'll never see that again, I don't think, in wrestling where someone is so loved, the hearts are so loved in one place and so hated in another. I, you'll, you'll never see that in, ever again, I guarantee it. And uh, so it all culminates at, uh, you know, they all... Uh, they're still together. They have the big match at Stampede, the Calgary Stampede in your house. The whole family's there. The whole country is cheering. They get the win over the American wrestlers. And, um, you know, just shortly after that, though, tragedy 
befalls, uh, which is at the beginning of a series of which unfortunate events in the Heart Legacy, but Brian Pillman's found dead at the Bad Blood pay-per-view. So, you know, the Heart Foundation's kind of... It's all coming to the screw job, too, at that point. So Bad Blood is the last pay-per-view that Bret Hart ever wrestles on at for WWE besides Survivor Series 97. Um, that that pay-per-view, it's really a, a Bad Blood. I've always thought of that pay-per-view as a, a changer in the business. You got the beginning of the Hell in a Cell, the first Hell in a Cell match. Then you got... Brian Pillman passes away. It's the debut of Kane. Uh, the last time Bulldog and Brett are together on a uh, WWE pay per view before the screw job. So the for about another month, those guys are kind of you know they're still hey it's Anvil, Bulldog, Owen and Brett, and uh, we go into Survivor Series and we all know what unfolds there with the screw job where Brett is you know screwed out of the title on this last match, he didn't want to do the job for Sean, whatever side, I'm not going to get into the screw job here, it's not the time or place, this is the only tribute show, but uh, after that unfolds, all that's left is Bulldog Anvil jump with Brett to WCW, and Owen is kind of just left alone in the WWF for the first time, just by himself, with none of you know, the guys he came up with through Stampede, or uh, his brothers, and brother-in-laws, so Owen's just kind of, you know, left in a, a limbo where he kind of comes the black heart. Then there was o, o, just o Owen, you know, all by himself. And uh, he, it's that time, uh, coming off of when he injured Stone Cold's neck at uh, SummerSlam there, 97. I touch back on that, I'll touch back on that. He had uh, given Stone Cold a uh, Tombstone Piledriver that went awry and, you know, injured Stone Cold. So they decided to bring that back up in Owen's storyline, though, and he injures Dan B. Severn. Same thing, injures his neck. And it's one of my favorite times for Owen, for actually. Like, it sucks to play on the Stone Cold Broken Neck thing, but it's, it is wrestling and people get hurt. So they continue on with the story, he injures Dan Severn, and he has this shirt that says, uh, I mean, it, it, he started before, obviously, with the Stone Cold, and it was Owen 316, I just broke your neck. And I love that. I, if I could get a hold of that t-shirt, I'd love to have a, that t-shirt. But, yeah, so they're playing that Owen kind of, you know, injures Dan Severn. And he feels bad about it and he decides he can't. He's not going to wrestle any, any, uh, anymore. He, you know, he doesn't like what happened. He's hurt people and stuff. And uh, so Owen's off TV for a while. And uh, we'll mention that he... Also around this time, um, the nation, he was in the Nation of Domination, which is, you know, kind of silly because they started out as a black militant group, and uh, then they, I mean, they had white guys in it too, like Crush or whatever, but still, and they get bringing Owen kind of after Farouk leaves, and uh, he kind of takes over. It's a battle between him and The Rock for who's the leader. And it was, it was a very entertaining time and uh, for Owen doing that stuff. I always liked that stuff. And it was when I was really watching a lot. And, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, I watched all this stuff when I was a little kid, so a lot of it's, um, I haven't gone back and touched on it. I haven't watched it, really, since I've seen here and there. But it's all kind of that area. I'm 10 or 12 years old at the time, and it's like, uh, I get it mixed up a little bit, but I... The top, you run around with the nation, Dan Severn thing. Uh, very, hey, I'd have to go back and really watch that again. But uh, the thing I do really remember is where we're leading here is um, when he gets teamed up with uh, Jeff Jarrett in the Blue Blazer. This is when uh, wrestling's got to be, you know, WWF especially good. WCW is kind of going down in the ratings at this point. WWF is just up. Uh, up to the roof, everybody's watching, you can't go anywhere, it's all culminating up to WrestleMania 15, which when I, when this was happening, I remember it, this, WrestleMania 15 was like the biggest deal ever, it was going to be Stone Cold and The Rock were fighting for the belt, and you know, you got oh, Owen and Jeff, Jeff Jarrett, that's when they start tagging up, 
it's the hot point in wrestling. Uh, during this time, they they are gonna they're gonna introduce SmackDown, the second show. And I remember Owen being on that. One of the last things I remember seeing Owen on was uh, the SmackDown pilot episode before it actually got. It was like a one-time deal they brought on SmackDown, and it obviously worked. It's still on to this day. On it was Thursday night SmackDown. Then kids, I don't know what the hell day it's on now. Um, so yeah, and we go to now leading up this Over the Edge pay per view where Owen Hart has put back on the blue blazer costume, and he's this superhero who's gonna do what's right. You got him running around backstage, all just a joke, kind of. Of him backstage telling kids to, you know, uh, eat their vitamins, say their prayers, drink their milk, all that stuff. You know, uh, superhero, he's going to save wrestling. He's doing these entrances where he drops in from the ceiling like a superhero, kind of like with Sting. I guess it was to make fun of Sting. And uh, so get to the Over the Edge 99 pay per view where Owen Hart is the Blue Blazer and he's going for the Intercontinental Championship against the Godfather. And I, like I said earlier in the show, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't watch it live, and there's no footage of it ever. Not that I would want to see Owen falling from the ceiling. Um, but I've obviously went back and watched JR's telling everybody what happened, and it, it, it really, like, he's supposed to make this dramatic entrance, but really it's just for comedy. Comes down from the ceiling, and, you know, Gets off and falls on his face. That was what he, I guess he was supposed to do. And, you know, Owen would have done it great. We all would have laughed for sure. With Owen, like, entertaining. It would have been, and Owen made it entertaining with that Blue Blazer thing at the end, as stupid as it was. And I still, I couldn't wait to see the Blue Blazer. I knew it was, you knew it was Owen Hart. Everybody did. They didn't really try to hide it. And I would just get so excited to see Owen have a good time uh, with it, as silly as it was. And he did that gimmick too because they had given him a few. They wanted to have an on-screen affair with Deborah or whatever, and he turned it down because his kids watched wrestling, and that's just who Owen was. He's a family guy. He wanted his kids to be able to watch him on TV, so he opted for the Blue Blazer thing, and he didn't want to say no to as stupid as that was because he also wants to keep his job. So unfortunately, he does this stunt and his cape got caught they think or whatever the story is he released the he had a quick release cable on his uh on the apparatus that lured him to the ring and uh that slipped and owen fell and that was it owen hart was taken away with so quickly uh still had a promising career and it's always Talk, talked about like Owen being the family guy that he just wanted to do wrestling for a couple more years and was just saving all the money he could because he was a notorious penny pitcher on the road. He was, the guy would get fans to drive him to events and sleep on fans' couches because he was just trying to save every dime he could so he could retire as early as possible to be with his family. And it's sad that wrestling, the thing that he wanted to get out of to be with his family, took him away from his family forever. And we lost Owen Hart that night, and it's been 20 years. And, I mean, he sits here with me every week. Owen's never, I've never forgotten about Owen Hart. Of all the wrestlers who died I, that we've lost over the years, Owen, that one, he stayed with people. And it's great that we still have, like, Natalia Hart and Teddy Hart and the other Harts and the Hart Foundation, like, Bulldog's son and uh, Brian Pillman's son now in MLW, carrying on the Hart legacy. And not only with them, though, um, other wrestlers. I Like, he can't... Kevin Owens is named his kid Owen after Owen, which is why his wrestling name became Kevin Owens. So every time he gets in the ring... That's a tribute to Owen, and I, it was with Kevin Owens that also said, like, people were like, oh, you do the sharpshooter as one of your moves as a tribute to Brett, and he would say, no, it's for Owen. And Sami Zayn and Chris Jericho says that there probably wouldn't be an Owen Hart, or there would not be a Chris Jericho if it wasn't for Owen Hart. He wanted to be like Owen Hart. And those, those are two guys still wrestling today, and, like, obviously, I said the third generation of Hearts that are still out there wrestling and say like say what you people you know have their opinion of Teddy Hart how he is I love Teddy Hart Teddy Hart and maybe he's got Owen in because he entertains me 
every time I see him, I'm always entertained by Teddy Hardy. Um, you know, I, I forgot to mention, uh, also coming up in this, this episode, that we have an interview with uh, Impact Superstar, Aiden Prince. So uh, we're just going to, before we wrap, wrap things up here on the Owen Hart uh, Memorial Show, which I've had fun talking to you about oh, and telling you, if you didn't know anything about Owen Hart, I hope I taught you something about Owen Hart. It's the first time you're hearing about Owen Hart, you want to see more about this Owen Hart guy because it all is a simple YouTube click. Go check out Owen, any of his match. I don't ever remember Owen really having a bad match. Check it. But anyways, we're going to roll right now with the Aiden Prince uh, interview that I did earlier today. Welcome to another threatening interview on the Idol Threat Wrestling Podcast. I'm here today with uh, Impact Star <laughs> Aiden Prince. Thank yes. you for coming on the show. Let's, let's start with, um, you're the tag team champion of Border City Wrestling. Border still. City. So let's talk about you and Brett Banks. How was that? Uh, Going, you saw you tag up in Toronto. On yes. Expo uh, that was on an imp that was an impact. That taping. was an yeah. impact taping. Yes. Um, you guys yeah. obviously have similar styles and gel yes. together very well. And in Toronto, I think you got pretty decent pop. They knew who you guys were. It's so all good. All good. What's it like tagging up with uh, Brent? Um, first of all, I got to credit that pop to uh, Brent. He's pretty big in Toronto, so they they definitely knew Brent. Um, but uh, I've I've done a lot of different little tag team things and stuff in the past, but. Working with Brent has probably been um, one of the coolest experiences. He's great to work with. He's fun to you know work in the ring with. He gives sweet ideas, makes me look cool. I make him look cool, so it's uh, it goes pretty good. Now, don't sell yourself short though, because the night before was the Rebellion. Yes. Uh, tape, oh, well, live pay per view. Yes. And I was in the audience, and you got a very decent reception coming in, and, and I saw uh, some Prince City shirts and yes, everything. So. Yes, that was. Um, you know, I don't know how many people know this, but I, I found out that day that I was on a pay-per-view, so, um, you know, travel issues happened, I got placed in there, um, and, uh, yeah, that was, it was really cool, I think I owe a lot to the, the Destiny Wrestling crowd at that point, because um, a lot of those guys know who I am, so, right. I think that nice little group on the stage, uh, yeah, for get, sure. the, get the rest of the crowd going with me, so. That was a very cool experience. Very yeah, cool. That, would you say that's a highlight of where you're at so far in your career? Yes, or? yes, I'd have to say that, that that's a big deal because I think a lot of people have looked at me for a long time where, um, you know, I'm a hometown guy, so of course I get on the, the Border City Wrestling, Impact Wrestling shows, right? So um, I think me being on the tapings in Toronto, me doing the pay-per-view in Toronto kind of showed some people that, hey, they're not just looking at him because he's in Windsor, they're looking at him because he belongs with us. So. And uh, throughout so far the last few months we've seen you on Impact, you've really been going at it with uh, Ace Austin. Yes. How is, how is that? Um, uh, wrestling with him, working with him? Uh, Ace is great. Ace is great. Ace has a contract. I don't. Um, so I think every time I go out there with Ace, I have something to prove. And um, it was nice to give you a little, from the two tapings in Windsor, a nice little rivalry kind of story. Which was very cool. I didn't, uh, I mean, I didn't expect that. So it was very, uh, very cool to see the vignettes and stuff like that. So, um, like you said, I mean, it, it really is kind of the, I'm at the, the peak of where I've been so far um, and, and, and still climbing. Of course, we got Impact Wrestling comes back to Windsor, Ontario at St. Clair College on July 19th to 20th. And we yes. can only assume that you're going to be a big part of it. Uh, yes. Um, if you've seen the posters and stuff like that, I'm definitely on there. So I will be part of, I hope, both days. Um, if it's one day, then hey, I'm grateful to be there. And we'll, it's probably going to be about the same thing, like two nights of taping, but we'll get four four shows. That's most likely the case. So that's their usual who knows story. how many times we will maybe actually see you. That's what I mean. So I'll wrestle a hundred times if they need me to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, we, and the fans in Windsor are uh, very appreciative of your work. They really, really do enjoy it. Prince City, we call it around. Yes. The, so you see um, enough of the shirts, you get enough. You're definitely... Definitely over. In it's 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 funny because the the Prince City thing started as obviously um, a node to Windsor, a node to Wind City, yep. um, and then it's be kind of spun into something bigger. Um, I honestly, when I first put Prince City on a shirt, it was supposed to be just a shirt once, call it a day, and I think it's kind of grown into more of like a, I I'd like to call it a movement. You know what I mean? Because kind of everywhere I go now, you know, Prince City's with me type thing. It's not not necessarily just Windsor anymore. It's it's wherever I go, it's my it's my Hulkamaniacs, it's it's Prince City. Yeah, and it's definitely working. And um, speaking of other cities, where, where have you been working lately since we saw you at the event? Um, uh, I, I've been, been doing quite a bit in the, the Mississauga area um, between um, 
Battle Arts Academy where Santino School is and um, Destiny Wrestling. Um, they've really given me um, a lot of opportunities. I've had the, the pleasure of working with guys like Tyler Bate there, um, guys like Loki there. So they've, uh, they've definitely given me a lot of confidence and um, a lot of a boost in that area. So which has also grown to, to places. I've done a little bit with Lucha Tio, uh, Lucha Demand, whatever they call themselves nowadays. Uh, and then there's the, the Fort Erie area where I wrestle for Border Town Wrestling. Um, and then just right now, it's just, um, it's, you know, taking whatever I can get and, and, you know, trying to showcase what I can do better than everybody. And even um, expanding and teaching future generations of wrestlers too, because you teach right here in the Can-Am. That's why yes. I you tonight. Um, You've got a class later. Yeah. Um, I mean, this, this place made me who I am. Um, and I know what it was like to walk in here terrified. Um, so the fact that I've been blessed with the opportunity to show some young guys some stuff and, and give back and, and also know how it is to be in their shoes right. and to, to walk in these doors and be intimidated by an impact logo or just a wrestling ring, you know, and what all I mean? the faces that are up around you it's intense, come through you know the mean? City Yeah, and so, gym. so I mean me, me being able to be here being a younger guy in the business and stuff but I think I take very well to the kids and that's I mean, always I, good when you yeah. got a guy that and it wasn't too long ago either. It was wasn't, you know. You, um, you started in what 2012? With about that, yeah. I just had uh, I just had my seven year. Yeah, in seven so. years. You yeah. definitely accomplished accomplished a lot. Even with go a little bit further, a couple of years ago at uh, Border City, you fought Pete Dunne. Right? Yes, that was yes. Big. yes, At that time, um, it was probably up there for you in your career. Right? Yeah, I'd say that was probably the first match that I had where it was like, whoa, this is real. This isn't just. You know, wrestle anymore. This is like I think I can do this because I mean I'm, I'm watching the guy with the WWE belt right. in his hand and he's walking down. I felt like I was in a video game. And then after the match, it was like I had this 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 feeling inside me like I I could go with him. Yeah. So if I can go with him, then give me the next one. You know what I mean? Which which really lit a bit of uh, a fire under me. So I owe a lot of credit to Scott and. Uh, to, to Border City Wrestling right. at that point. Uh, and Border City, speaking of, has two events coming up in the near future. We have the yes. uh, first is the Father's Day show yes. on June 15th, yes. and you'll be a part of that. Of you course, of course. Elaborate on that a little uh, bit. The coolest thing about those little shows, um, and I, I don't even want to say little because sometimes they, they fill up, but I mean, they're obviously not the caliber of our St. Clair College shows, but those are the shows where I have the most fun because I can interact with people more personally. I can... You know, be a little more fun. I can try new things, stuff that uh, I don't gotta be so so right. worried about TV and and uh, cameras and pressure and everything that goes along with this crazy amazing world. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm able to uh, just go out there and have fun, be funny, and yep. you know. And then you got the Essex Fun Fest, yes. which is July seventh. Which not too the same exact thing. You know, it's like I love doing those little fair shows and stuff because. I run around, I'm a giant child at the end of the yeah, day, really so like I run around, I'm, like, I'm looking at animals and toys, and yeah, that's cool. I, I love it, I love it. And there too, it's the home base, you're comfortable in front of a that's, lot of the yeah. same people, maybe not so much in Essex, but at the St. Clair yeah. show, and then again you got, it's a free show, it's Windsor, it's promoting Windsor, it's a Father's Day, and that's, and it that's brings in new people and they get a chance to see. And if there's one thing I'm all about, it's, it's the city, right? So I mean, uh, anything we can do to give back, seeing all those different sponsorships and all the people that the charities help and all that, that's, that's a really cool feeling, you know, sure. just being able to, you know, not only look at Windsor as like my life, but be able to give back to Windsor in the little way that I can. Right. Whatever you can do. Exactly. And, um, another thing I just want to talk about with you is with working border city, you design the flyers and yes. you do a really, like, I think they're a really clean looking, great Thank job you. on Thank the flyers. You. It's like, is that something like Scott just kind of knew you did design and ask you, or did you have to kind of? It's funny. Like, uh, kind of asking to do it. Right? When I was like, I'm a huge nerd when it comes to computers. So when I was a little kid, um, I I had like this really old. I think it was like a Windows 98 or Windows 95 computer showing my age. Um, and uh, and I, I had a scanner, and I used to scan my WWF magazines, and I I print out the stuff, and I cut out the wrestlers, and position my dream matches on a poster. And I photocopied that poster, so so it was something you had already been doing. It for was a very something long that time. I just I just genuinely enjoyed, like fantasy matches and putting right. Goldberg next to Stone Cold before they had ever seen each other. And like, and is that something? So you just you self taught it to yourself. Never exactly. really took a class or anything. Nothing. Because nothing. the Flyers, no. they've been using them for how long? Have they been using them in Border City? Ah, uh, now almost since I started. Just yeah. about. And um, uh, our graphic guy had left right uh, 
right around the time I started. And I remember looking at the posters and I'm a huge stickler for editing and, and graphics. So um, I knew that our wrestling was here our graphics and stuff. Right? I do remember the older yes. flyers being so it was like, just really basic, yeah. like, hey, we're bringing in King Kong Bundy. Here's yes. King Kong Bundy like, on the picture, and then there's these guys, these guys, these guys. Kind of and right. news are always very nice, full, right. and with like, all the I, different guys. I would see those, and just, just and i bring it up with Scott all the time, like, you know, whatever, and then I started kind of making stuff, and then it turned into, uh, he was helping me learn make graphics, because he was teaching me, you know, you obviously have to put the bigger stars bigger, and, Right. These people are, you know, background people. Some people don't belong on the flyer yet. There's, there's a lot of different levels that come to it. Which, um, so again, I owe a lot to him, even in my graphic work, because he gave me so much work to practice. Yeah. Um, and I mean, <laughs> I gotta give him credit. There was times I was so stressed out, but it was like, I, I learned so much just making those graphics over the years that you can even see if you look at my first posters with yeah, everything. To now it's just a ball. Yeah. And I basically think, now you're yeah. doing impact posters. Way. Which was really cool, you so know. I mean, they work obviously, gets out there. Everybody sees it. Almost like exactly. the world gets to see it. Cause exactly. I show those flyers, show up on Twitch yeah. and fight network. When yeah, that's the like show, I've right? done like the 25th anniversary. I did the commercial, and I mean, I still get to watch that on the Global Wrestling Network or Impact Plus now, that and like stuff cool. like that. So it's rewarding. Too. That part of it's cool. Yeah. And I think when you, when we when we when you had said you know I didn't take a class or anything, I think. I think it relates to wrestling in the sense of like some things you just can't teach. Yeah, for sure. You, know, you can't teach God, passion in somebody. You, and, 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 and I'm not saying that someone who doesn't have it can't get it because I was in a dark place at one time and I got out of that, right? But um, you can't teach passion. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you really can't. So it's something you like. You're it's always taking away like the Tommy yeah. Dreamer or Bubba Ray Dudley of Border City. Yeah. Yeah. Which sure was great. Thing I which is great. Help, right? And yeah, it was really cool it. that as I got into things and I talked to guys like Tommy and, and stuff like that and I see Sammy Callahan does um, design stuff with Impact. So it's like seeing those guys and it's like, oh, I can do both. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was a time where I was like, oh, I can only, I got to do I gotta one or the other. Out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Being involved with Border City and Impact and that has showed me so much in the fact that I can do everything. You know, I can... I can wrestle, I can do design stuff, I can make videos and, you know, use it at the end of the day. Well, today is um, May 23rd, and 2019, which today is the 20th anniversary of Owen Hart's tragic right. accident at the Over the Edge pay-per-view. And I just would like maybe you to share some of your memories of mm -hmm. watching Owen Hart growing up, and if he was uh, at all an influence on the way you are in the ring or anything. He definitely, yeah. I think almost all us Canadians are influenced by the Hearts in oh, some yeah, way or totally, other. Totally, totally. Even if we're not wrestlers. Right. Um, growing up, I had a few favorites. I had Brian Pillman, I had Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and Owen Hart. So um, any of the, 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 the whole Hart Foundation, the gimmick of it, all of it was sweet to me. And I always liked Owen because he did backflips or, right. um, you know, he did Huracanas, things like that, that, uh, was like the little cruiserweight brother type thing. So yeah. I always loved Owen for that. And, and he could talk. He could really talk. Yeah, he was, uh, maybe the best heart of them all. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was very which, good, right? So he could do pretty much um, anything. We talked about that yeah. on my podcast yeah. today. Uh, yeah. Just how he could adapt to anything that was thrown at him. Exactly, right? Yokozuna's your tag part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guess what? We're going to be the tag team role. Gibson, right? And only, it's only cool hearing, about, uh, hearing about the ribs and cold and stuff. So, um, yeah. I mean, I can only imagine, like, you can tell he was a big part of the locker room. You can tell he was a special guy. So, um, and I know people just like that, you know, so I can't even imagine um, how hard that was for a lot of people. So, yeah. But, yeah. Well, um, I'll let you get to your class in a few minutes. Just uh, anything else you want to uh, plug, promote, uh, um, your Facebook page or Instagram, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, check out my Instagram. Hopefully there's a link somewhere in this area. Oh, <laughs> um, you can check me out at, at uh, the Aiden Prince on Twitter, um, at Aiden Prince on Instagram, and just search Aiden Prince on uh, Facebook. If you do have a wrestling promotion, you feel like, you know, boosting up your graphic design work, check out Michael Lopez Design on Facebook. And uh, hit us up, and we'll see what we can do for you. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me at the gym. Right. Thank Always you. Come by here. Thank you. And for the Idol Threat Wrestling Podcast, I'm Joey Idol. It's been Aiden Prince. See you later. All right, so thanks a lot to Aiden Prince for uh, doing that interview with me. And keep an eye on Aiden Prince. That guy definitely going places in the wrestling world. Uh, look for him uh, in Impact soon again, I'm sure, at the July 19th and 20th tapings at St. Clair in Windsor, Ontario. I'll be a part of that on uh, the ring crew and uh, hopefully get some good photography and uh, stuff at that show. I'll bring you more about that in weeks to come. So uh, just, you know, things we miss with Owen Hart, uh, things we miss about him uh, daily when we 
watch wrestling is like, take a look at this picture here. He's carrying those two slammies. He won a slammy and stole one or something, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, but either way, Owen wasn't told, like, hey, you know, here's these slammies. We want you to run around the ring and, like, say how much you love your slammies. And uh, that was just something that Owen won those two slammies, knew it would be entertaining and something to do. So he carried those, uh, those slammies around, and they were as important as a title to Owen, and he made us believe that. And if you remember near the end, like the, uh, he got in that fight with Bulldog, and uh, Bulldog threw his slammy on the ground, and it broke. You, could, you felt bad for Owen Hart. You're like, oh man, it slammed me. That sucks. But that was just what Owen Hart did in a time of a lot of wrestlers being so serious about their craft and everything, or just these cartoon gimmicks. Owen just didn't take it serious, and I think we appreciated that. And I think we need a guy like that again, really, in wrestling. Just Owen Hart. We miss you to this day, and that brings us to our segment. Tell me he didn't just say that. Tell me he didn't just say that. With this week, we're going to use Owen Hart, obviously. It's uh, his show. The show's all for Owen, and this is probably his most famous little slip-up. I don't need you with a bad leg doing a prank. You're too damn selfish, and that's why you're sitting there with a bad leg. And that's why I kicked your leg out of your leg. Just silly, a nice little, uh, little accident that Owen may have caused, but uh, it's just so funny. He just like fades out there. He knows he screwed up. He's just like, I kicked your leg from your leg. So yeah, Owen, definitely one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Uh, Canada, you had to be a hard fan. You just say you had to. It's in our blood in Canada, really, I guess, to be a hard fan. But they were good, so you really backed them, and they represented Canada well. And it's a shame that, you know, we've lost them all, except for Brett and the other brothers that you don't see. But all of them, not just Owen, we miss Bulldog, we miss Pillman, and we miss Dynamite Kid, we miss... Like, these guys that all came out of Calgary, and they just revolutionized the business. These... We're our unsung heroes of Canada, but the Hart family, and the show is for Owen Hart and all of uh, the other guys as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, check out my Instagram, uh, Idol Threat Productions, for great wrestling photography and just other silly things. Uh, you check out, obviously, you're watching on YouTube. Keep watching on YouTube. Please subscribe. Please, please subscribe. Uh, you know, and uh, my Facebook, you can find Joey Idol. Just Joey Idol. I'm on there. Check it out. Uh, keep watching. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I can't say it enough, please. Uh, to the Idol Threat Wrestling Podcast, the show where we like our sports fake and our wrestling real. It's time to snap out of that Slim Jim and get back to whatever you got to do. We will see you next week. Not sure what we got going on, but be there.